Hi, I'm Brian with Pioneer Builders. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the insulation strategies we used specifically with the use of Rockwall. Why in the world am I standing in a crawl space? Well, in this particular house, this crawl space is unvented. It's the first unvented crawl space that we've ever done. So when you think about how you would do your crawl space, typically what you would do is your floor itself would have insulation contained within the joist base. And that's a perfectly reasonable way to build. However, the next level, if you wanna up your building game, would be to have an unvented crawl space. What you wanna do in that point is not have insulation in your floor system. Instead, you take that insulation and you move it out to your exterior walls. Think about it this way. If you've ever lived in a basement, usually you don't have insulation in the ceiling of your basement you have it against your walls. That's where your thermal boundary ends up being. And that's what we did on this house. So we used very rigid comfort board insulation on the outside, the perimeter of this particular house. Comfort uh, board is gonna be a more rigid product. You get a very nice high R value per inch. And in this case, it netted out to right around R16. We only needed to get R15, so just one little tip. Get on Rockwell's website. You might talk to your insulation contractor if you're not gonna be the one procuring and self-performing. Pay attention to the performance specification that you need either by your architect's design, whatever was included with your mechanical design parameters, uh, or just whatever is prescriptive for code. In our case, it was R15 is what we had to meet on the uh, inside or R10 from the outside. I just really like going on the inside. I think it makes everything a lot easier. So that was the crawl space. Incidentally, we have our mechanicals. A good portion of our heating and cooling is contained within the crawl space. So now by virtue of us having the thermal envelope on the outside of that, uh, it's really on the inside of the foundation, but on the outside, the perimeter, all of our ductwork, the indoor unit of our mini split system is all contained within condition space, which helps with your HERS scores. Everything performs better. Another thing that you'll probably get by doing it this way is lower blower door numbers. So by virtue of not having all of these passive ventilations on the outside, we can make this detailing way better to make the whole building atmosphere inside way more efficient. So now we're on the main level. What we have here is comfort bat. So battens are gonna be less dense, easier to work with from a, a, um, a weight perspective. They weigh a little less, but here's one thing that's good to know. You get uh, an R23 as opposed to maybe an R20, an R21, something like that. In this case, you might notice, uh, this is probably a better example over here. We pretty much always build with 24 inch on center walls as opposed to 16 on center. So that's gonna give you a little bit better thermal performance. Now you're getting a little bit more R value per inch using this particular type of mineral wool insulation. That might actually allow you to size down your mechanical system. So think about that. My background's finance and accounting. So when it comes to budgeting, all of these dials interplay together so if we spend a little bit more maybe on our insulation, we might be able to size down our mechanical equipment. At, a very least, at the very least, we would lower our cooling loads, lower our heating loads, and that should make it so that we're actually spending less money when the house is in service. And when the house is more stable, it's more comfortable. Thus, comfort bat, comfort board. Pretty good branding there, Rockwell. Up above here is a flat ceiling. In this case, with Rockwell, what you might have to do is stack some of the different types of insulations that they have in order to meet your R value requirements. Check your building permit, check your climate zone. Uh, if you're going for passive house, see what the, those folks have come up with for what you need to meet. So I'm diverging just a little bit into the procurement side for what you might have to think about. Or you're working with an insulation person and they kind of take care of that for you. Another application that we have in here is a vaulted ceiling. 
Now, earlier I talked about how we tend to go with 24 on center instead of 16 on center. Sometimes the engineer requires us to tighten things up. So in this case, our rafter is here, our 24 inches on center. And when we look over here, they're actually at 16 inches on center. So sometimes what you have to do just to get into the practical implementation or installation is you might have to move your insulation sideways or something like that in order to fill up the bay. So this is R38 here. What we have above that is ventilation, which keeps the underside of the roof vented. I like to have a very vapor open assembly to have good airflow, just to try to keep my risk down as much as I can. I don't necessarily go foam free, if you've heard that term. I think that there are some applications, and in this case, there was a portion of the house that we did need to use closed cell spray foam, but it was to minimize how much risk I would be exposing myself to. As a builder, one of the things I have to consider isn't just how high performance I can go, but there's going to be a tail to this project where I'm going to be very responsible in case something goes wrong. So I also have to think in terms of how can I mitigate risk as well as what can I do that gives the highest performance for this climate zone within monetary constraints that we have. So I'm going to run upstairs and show you another application that we have in this building. Okay, just a minute ago, I was down below. So now we're up above that section. Remember where I talked about it being 16 on center? So up here, you can see that we have a different insulation solution. Starting from the top, you have your typical roofing assembly, your roof sheathing. But in this case, we built with eye joist rafters. Eye joist rafters instead of say trusses or dimensional. So they have that shape that kind of looks like an eye. What we did that is unique to this project, never done this before, we use this LP Tech Shield product. On one side of it, it has a radiant barrier, so you can do the research on it. But in this case, we put the foil facing up. You might be used to seeing it down if it was up on the top of the roof deck. In this case, it's fairly vapor impermeable. So I wanted to make sure that I detailed all of this stuff correctly. I actually worked with rock wool, which depending on the circumstances you can do to maybe use woofy modeling or some other uh, working with them to make sure that you keep your building safe. Remember I talked about that earlier. We want to make sure that our buildings are safe. So what I did, the guys executed it, is put this on, this is so hard, hopefully you can follow along on the underside of the top cord. What that does is it gave an airspace, a vent channel that runs all the way on the underside of the roof deck so that we can get that wind washing effect there to make sure that we don't accumulate any moisture in the roof sheathing. That's critical to make sure that we never have any rot in our roof sheathing. I specified this product to get the radiant benefits of during the cooling season, which means when it's really hot outside, to limit how much of an impact the sun would have on our mechanical system. At the beginning, we talked about having our mechanical systems in the crawl space. We did something similar here where we have the mechanical system for the upstairs up in the attic. So I wanted to bring all of that equipment, all of that ductwork within conditioned space. So what did I have to do to make sure that I didn't have any vapor problems? Talked about foam free earlier. In this case, I did use about three inches of closed cell spray polyurethane foam, C whatever it stands for. Anyway, in our area, one thing to note in Washington state, the blowing agent has to be used is less harmful to the environment than maybe what's been used in the past. So keep that in mind for those of you who might want to drop comments below. Sometimes you just have to do what you have to do and choosing something like this makes a lot of sense when you take everything into consideration. So that gives you, let's just say it's R7 per inch to use kind of a standard number. That could be an R21. What we did is we filled the balance of it with rock wool insulation. 
So it came to about an R51 assembly, which up at the roof deck is way beyond what we would ever have to do in our climate zone. So it's gonna perform very well. You might wonder why in the world did we put this white application up here? Basically, just to keep it tidier. When people are working up there, making sure that there's no fibers that they're getting, of course, they might be using a little, um, you know, an N95 face mask, something like that anyways. But it just keeps everything tighter. In the past, when I've done something similar, you might have to tape your seams if this is gonna be your air barrier. I'll tell you that membrane's pretty tough to make an air barrier. So in our case, that foam will be the air barrier as well as the moisture barrier. So a lot of little things to consider, but it ends up bringing everything into the thermal envelope, which is definitely a win. So what about this back here? This is the last thing that we're gonna talk about. There's also sound deadening capabilities or sound dampening capabilities when it comes to Rockwell. If you came in this room right now, and I wish I could have you here so that you could hear how well everything sounds, oftentimes in new construction, the sound is terrible when it comes to trying to do filming like this. But in this case, it's almost like you're in a studio so that it doesn't have a lot of echoing. It's able to absorb that, which makes the sound quality better. Of course, you're probably not filming for studio in your personal home. What we have on the other side of this is a bathroom. So usually you're gonna to wanna to do things for sound deadening or sound dampening for privacy, um, to be able to sleep better at night. So that's something else to consider. If you're building a custom home, make sure that you think about what walls might make the most sense. Maybe it's the primary bedroom, maybe depending on where the utility room is, that's a room that you would wanna put the sound deadening, uh, sound dampening insulation in. It does cost money, so you have to think about that. If you're building your own home and you're self-performing, you might choose to do a little bit more than you ordinarily would because when are you ever gonna get inside your walls again? So that's something else to consider is the sound dampening qualities of this particular type of insulation. You could also, like say it's a multifamily situation and you have people living below you, you could also put insulation there just so that you have less of that sound um, issues. If you're gonna really go for it though, consult with somebody who understands how you can effectively in a multifamily situation lessen the transmission of sound from one place to another. Another location that it might be more important for you is if you live next to transportation that's a little bit noisier. Maybe you live downtown and you're closer to a train station, or maybe you live closer to an, an airfield, something like that. You also want to think about how your whole system can lead to a quieter indoor environment. You see, we talk a lot about IAQ, which is indoor air quality, but the more umbrella term is IEQ, indoor environmental quality. So there's more to it than just how clean is the air that we breathe? How do things sound? Uh, lighting, the colors that are chosen, all of those things can also have an impact on the well being of those who live within the spaces that we build. Or if you're a commercial builder or an architect, thinking about if somebody's gonna be in this area for eight hours a day, how can we make that indoor environmental quality better so that we as people can perform better. So anyway, that was just a little project update. We're gonna be getting drywall here pretty quick. Over the weekend, our drywaller was here and uh, I can't wait, but once this is covered up, that's the last chance that we get. Leave a comment below, leave a question. I absolutely love teaching, but I also love learning. So it might be that you see something that I could improve for my next build, Hopefully you've seen something here that can improve your next build. Really appreciate you watching. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you like this content. Give me a follow at social media at Pioneer Builders Inc. Now go build something.